Hey, how are you doing, Billy Alex? I, that's going to be the hardest habit for you to break. But just as long as you're conscious of the fact that it's not good to do, then eventually you'll you'll learn not to say it. Okay. I can't make you change. You have to decide if you want to change. Um, because trust me, it does not work in real life. Anybody know who Matt Life is? You get Matt Dick Pays, right? You get Matt Dick Pays. <laughs> All right, MetLife did a study. It's a 40-year study. They took 100 people in 1970. 1970. In 1970, they took 40, I mean 100 people that were the age of 25 years old. Okay? They wanted the study to go until the people were five years past retirement. So they figured in 2000, Okay, they would be, you know, 65 years old. Okay, that would be, but they changed the retirement age in between there now. It's, you know, so they figured they would be five years after retirement. So they released the study in 2010. Now, when they first did this study with these 100 people, they asked them what their definition of success was. It's pretty much close to what mine is. Um, I consider being successful, being able to have everything I need and my family needs. Okay. And then to be able to buy some of the things that we want. Okay? To me, that's successful. Okay? Because there's rich people that are not, are not successful. Okay? Now, so they all agree. So, and then in 2010, this study came out. And you're going to see how realistic these numbers are. So, I'm going to ask each one of you, out of out of 100 people, 100 people, I'm going to give you a little help here. Five people didn't make it. Five people died. So you got five there. So out of these people that should be living their golden years at the age of 65, okay? That's the American dream, right? 65, you retire and live your golden years, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, out of these 100, we'll do it like an auction. You can start low. You can't go back down, y'all. We're going to do this in auction. How many people were rich out of 100? I'd say about 53. Ooh, you started pretty high. Anybody say higher? Okay. We're going to start the auction over. I would say that rich at the age of 65, I would say 2%. Two? You can say just how many, because 100 is okay. 100%, so two? I'd say less than 10%. Okay, so you're saying what number? It's an auction. 8%. 8? Eight? 4. They can't go backwards in the auction. 9. 9? 12. 12. Anybody go, anybody, here higher than 12? Come on, I can't do that auction here. <laughs> anybody higher than 12? Can't go Other than you, you were 53. Yes, I mean, hey, I love your optimism, bro. <laughs> but I'm going to show you the reality right now. Right. Now, how many times have you heard what they want to tax? They want to tax the one percenters, correct? Right. Okay, well, this is how accurate that life study was because one person oh, wow. was rich out of 100. Now, Now we're doing successful. How many people out of the 100 were successful? Here again, it's an auction. You got to start low. How many people were successful out of 100? Like even if they weren't rich? Right, successful. They could have everything they need and, and some of the things they wanted. Wow, you're starting live. I have to start somewhere else. Start live. Uh, Auction's over. Okay. <laughs> I would say 10%. 10? Oh, I'm going to have the first one over side. 15. I would say 15, too. Oh, sorry. Oh, we go 16. Okay. Okay. I'd yeah. say about 35. I think it's 35. Anybody hiring 35? Can't go lower. Can't go back. That's all. We need to take Keep trying to go backwards. We need to take him to the auction. I know. Well, no, we don't. <laughs> well, he doesn't get the paddle. If, if we're holding the auction, we need him there. <laughs> if we're selling something at the auction, we definitely want him there. 
Okay, 35. I hit 35. Going once. Going twice. So, now you want the real number? Yes. Four. Four. This is a, 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 an actual study that by MetLife. Oh, wow. Okay, this shows, this is reality. I'm not doing negativism, I'm showing you reality. Okay, this is reality. Now, it, obviously we're at, these five really don't count, do they? No. They're not there. So, 95 people, well actually, 90, 90, 90. Yeah, 95. So you take one and four out, 95 out of 100. And I guarantee you, all these successful people, I guarantee you the relationships probably aren't great, or some of them got health issues, okay, or, you know, legal problems. And same thing with the rich. They've either got legal problems, uh, relationship problems, whatever. So I guarantee you there's at least four people out of this. So that's why I get my number of 99, okay. Now, and when you heard him talking, and I don't know how old that video is, but he said 78, that was a very low number. Okay, that's very low because it's meant like, it had to be before the MetLife study came out. But anyway, um, that's reality. Now, you want to know the rest of the numbers because they don't get any better. I'm going to show you reality. The folks that are our grandparents, your grandparents, or it could be you. Well, I don't know, no one in this room, though. Could be me. <laughs> All right. I'm going to help you out. 46 people. Now, these are 65 year old folks. 46 out of 100 are still working and they're living paycheck to paycheck. If you liquidated everything these 46 people had on the average, assets, Counting their mortgages, whatever, because they don't even own their homes yet. Got some of them probably got a second mortgage, but to liquidate, <coughs> look at that total of assets. If they sold everything they had, three hundred dollars. Great retirement, right? Yeah. It's the world we live in. Now, obviously, we know what this number has to be. 44, these are 65 year old folks now that have worked all their life. I'll let someone finish this for me. They were flat, broke, broke. 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 Definitely in the negative column. Around the refinery, the refinery, he was bringing 3,200 home a week, 
And you know, now that I'm divorced, I I I, I was a stay-at-home mom for six years. You know. So. I was listening to the uh, evening news last night. This couple, uh, you know, they they got laid off in their jobs. They were making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, between the two of them. And now they're down to thirty-two thousand a year. I never even made it. And it's, they just said, you know, all we have, all, all what we're doing is just, and just even like myself, I'm used to having twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars a week. Oh, not me. But now I have nothing. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't have zip. I'm used to four hundred a month. So you know, yeah. I'm hungry. I turn around, <laughs> I turn around <laughs> and I see other people. And, 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 you know, this is a big wake up for me. You know? All right, I apologize. Things happen. All right, where was I? Oh, flat road. <laughs> All right. Christy? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to have you say a word about this time real fast, okay? okay? Now, while you're saying it, I'm going to ask you a question. You have to answer that question without thinking just very quickly, okay? All right. Say spot. 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 What are you doing like? I'm going to stop. Really? No. <laughs> Don't not go to lunch with this lady. She stops at green light. <laughs> she stops. Yep. Yeah, there you at go. At green light. Let's see what I do. Now, I'm sure some of you might have seen stuff like that, but what that's called in psychology, ladies and gentlemen, is train of thought. You weren't thinking about the question. You were thinking about, well, he thinks he's going to trick me, and I'm going to say spot again, or stop again. So you say the, the or spot again. So you say the closest thing to it. Okay? So you weren't thinking about the question. Okay? There's ways in sales. First of all, you never ask a customer, you never ask a person. I mean, because life is sales. You never ask a person a question you don't know the answer to. Okay? Especially in sales. Predominantly in sales. Okay? You never ask a question they can say no to. No's or negatives. What do negatives do? Make it all negative. They breed. Spiral out of control. They're already negative when they hit the car lot. They've got their guard up. Okay, I'm going to run through the steps of the sale real quick, and then we'll just, you know, we're going to sale on step one, but I want you to know. First of all, I'm going to tell you what a TO is. TO is a cardinal rule in sales. I'm sure it was invented in the car business, but for those of you guys that I'll put in an analogy, I'm sure every every gentleman in the room's had a date. Have you not? Have you had a date? Yes, sir. Okay. You had a date? You had a date? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, now, did you get a date with every girl you ever asked out? No. You? You? No, no. Right, right, right. Just like I don't sell every car, and you don't sell every car. But, so obviously you did something wrong. You didn't sell yourself well enough to it, right? Is that what we did? Okay. But, Say, now how many times did you, any of you guys ever go out with wingman? Have a wingman with you? Huh? Yeah. I've never actually seen that like go on before. I guess they were Well, it, it, it's not, but we try not to make it obvious. <laughs> Believe me, it goes on. Believe me, it goes on. Okay. You know, I, I mean, you know, well, some of our buddies were out, and, and you know, you could tell if a girl like liked one of us better than the other, so then we'd say that, you know, he'd go in, you know, and then. He'd come back, man, I need a little help with this deal. I can't close this deal. I can't get a phone number. I don't know what the deal is. You know? So so he TOs it to me. So I go. See if I can get the phone Take number. Over, is that Take over. Turnover. 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 Okay. Now, no customer ever leaves this lot without a man. No customer walks until a manager talks. So in other words, anywhere in the process and the steps to the sale that I'm about ready to give you, if you if you're a customer, because you, you have to have control of your customer, if you don't, then and it's, it's not tough, ladies and gentlemen. It, you have a lot of tools here to help you. But 
It's for instance, if you're asking that girl out, she should know I can't go out that night, i got to wash my hair that night. Uh, and then the next night I'm sitting around watching my humpback brother straighten up. Okay, you know that something, you're, she's not buying what you're selling. She don't like you, there's something there. It's either a personality conflict or whatever, okay? So you know when she starts throwing them, them answers at you, it's time for a T.O., okay? If it's a customer on the lot, this customer, I tell you what, I've got a great idea. Be right back, boom. Then you just take off. You don't turn back the knowledge anything. Take off. I've got a great idea. I'll be right back. Okay, you go tell your manager. You go tell your manager. Look, I don't know what's going on. Okay, I don't know if I look like the guy that humped a gopher two weeks ago in their backyard, <laughs> or if it's my breath. I don't know what it is, but this customer don't like. Me. Okay, I, I, I need to go. So then he's either going to go talk to the customers, or he's going to send another salesperson to go talk with them. Then you'll go with that customer, with that salesperson, to stand there with zip it. You know that what was that movie? W W dot. Oh, uh, Awesome Powers. There you go. Yeah. All right, and you shadow. It's called shadowing. You just shadow and you just be quiet and listen to everything they say. I'm gonna guarantee you, okay? Because even I doesn't matter. I have to get tos, okay? I, like I told you, I don't sell every customer. No one can. No one ever will be able to, okay? So there's times when my personality, my selling mode, or their buying, well, you do have to adapt your selling mode, and I have to not be as hyper when I'm with older folks sometimes, and not talk as loud, okay? Slow down a little bit, okay? But there's gonna be times when there's just that personality conflict, they don't like the body language, whatever it may be, okay? They, you're gonna say, you know, you're gonna have to get a TO, okay? But once you TO it, and someone else sells them a car, half of something's better than all of nothing, Plus, you're brand new. Even when I'm not brand new, I still need TO, ladies and gentlemen. So don't ever let a customer leave this lot without first talking to a manager. Because if you let them leave a lot and, you know, you go and tell your manager, oh, he had to go because he was running late. Well, guess what? It might happen once. But the second time, you're going to say, well, you better follow them off the lot see if they have a job for you. Because you don't longer, longer have one here. That's the cardinal rule in all the car dealers all across the United States. But you'll find out that a lot of salespeople I don't know what it is, but they don't even use that. They don't use it, and that's why they don't stay around, because they get caught doing it, they ain't going to be around. But when you go do your homework that I'm going to send you out to do tonight, you're going to see. There's probably be a lot of you that they don't even do a TO on. Okay? Don't be that person. Go get help, because all it is is getting help. You can learn. Okay? Maybe well, yeah, you'll sit there and you'll learn, because there's been many a times that I told the customer the same thing that this guy is saying to him. But you have to respond to totally different now. I'm going, wait a minute, I just asked him that. And he said something totally different. You know? So it's amazing. A different face makes a difference. Okay? And, you know, you're new. And stay brand new as long as you can because people enjoy that. How many gamblers in the room? Poker players, car players? Texas Hold'em? Nothing like that? Wow. I played Go Fish. Y'all are tough. <laughs> All right, let's say that we're professional gamblers. All of us, <laughs> except for Alex. Let's say Alex is a whale. You heard a whale? <laughs> no, no, a whale is like one of the people that try to get into casinos that has tons of money. Okay, so let's say, but but they're not professional gamblers. Let's say he's a whale. He's got tons of money. Now all of us are pros. We have a poker game every Saturday night. And I tell you guys, look, I got this guy that's a whale, man. He's got billions of dollars. He's got to come play. He's never played poker before. What do you think all of us are doing? Jumping. We're already on the internet getting looking at that Lamborghini and, and, and the Ferraris and the new home. We're already spending his money. Because <laughs> we know we're going to take it. Okay. Car business is one of the last arts that you can actually negotiate in. Just negotiate. Home sales is really not negotiable. I, I have family and sisters that are in real estate stuff. And predominantly most self, people that are in real estate are not true salespeople. To a certain extent they are, but it's nothing like being a car dealer. I have a brother-in-law that was a great, could have been a great car salesperson, but the only thing he was really made for home sales, um, and he, he, said, he said he was blessed to have got in the car business first before he did. He's a big sales manager for a home, uh, you know, a home builder now. And, but that's primarily where, that's his niche. Because um, he was great, people loved him. He did it, but he, it was something about going for the sale, going for the clothes that he wouldn't do. There's many a time. I remember one time, um, a real high up, I don't remember what the guy was in Kansas City, but we're at the Cadillac Chevy store. 
And uh, this guy had been in like three to four times, okay? I'm going, Billy, what is this? Like, you're going to marry this guy? What? 